Hello and welcome again to the series showing you how to make uh, low resolution retro pixel point and click adventure games with uh, Godot and Escoria, the Escoria framework. In the previous episode I explained to you that there are at least three ways to achieving that. And I will start today with the first of the three techniques that I detailed before, which is everything in your game is low resolution. Everything is 320 by 200 or 240 depending on your preferences. But there is no way out of it, you will get fat pixels everywhere. So let's start. Let's run Godot. And if you, uh, if you have followed the previous episode, normally you have the Escoria demo game already installed, untouched. Let's run it. Let's open it at least. And let's look at uh, what it looks like. Oh, sorry, I forgot to revert some change I did in my uh, previous... Uh... Okay, let's run the demo game. And if it's untouched, it looks like this. You have a game that's uh, 1280 by 800 pixels, and it's high resolution. And if you run the game, some assets look low resolution, but really the game is high resolution. You see the tiny pixels there are barely visible. So. First thing first, change the resolution of the game. So go to project settings and go to display window and change this to low resolution here. So 320 by 200. And the second thing you want to do, and that's important to understand, is look at those settings. Stretch. There is mode and there is aspect. I would strongly suggest that you go to the Godot homepage about multiple resolutions uh, rendering because it details what everything does, the stretch mode and the, the, the other setting, uh, aspect. Uh, you have a, an explanation of everything. And for pixel art, we really want nearest neighbor uh, stretching. We don't want any sort of filtering. At least it's up to you, but I would recommend that. So you change from 2D to viewport. Let's do that. Uh, yes, there you go. So, viewport. And keep is important because when you resize your window, you don't want the player to be able to see what's outside of the camera. So, it's all up to you. If you think that your game can be played on different asper aspect ratios of screens, but you also want that if the screen is wider, to see further on the sides, you want to see what's happening in those extra areas on the sides, then you can change uh, this setting. But I would suggest to keep keep for now, so that when you resize the window or you change the res aspect ratio of the screen, you keep the control of your proportions and of the size of your camera, and that whatever happens, it's always 320 by 200. So there you go. Viewport keep. Uh, let's run the game again. Let's run. So as you can see, we can't see anything, but actually we can see something. It's just that now the window is tiny and the game is huge, so it's cropped. Uh, but we can see that it's kind of working. If I enlarge this window and I look at the pixels, it's approximately the size of pixels that I would expect in, a, expect in 320 by 200 pixels. So let's move on. Now we need to create a room at the right size, 320 by 200. And we are lazy, so normally I would tell you to create it from scratch. But we are going instead to use one of the rooms from the demo game. Let's take the first room, room 01. So let's go to the folder and click on duplicate. I will call it room 01 320. Let go to do the work and let's open the scene room 01tscn So this is what we see on screen when we run the demo game and we go to the first room. Uh, the first thing to do would be to get some downscaled assets. So if you look at this file, this file and this file, the one that have, have suffixed 320, I've created them myself. What I did is that I opened the folder containing the assets on the hard drive and then I took the PNG files, 
for example, uh, art1.png, and I opened it in my favorite paint program, and I downscaled it to a low resolution, 320, and then I named it art1 underscore 320. So I did that myself, and if I double click on the files, I see that when I open art1, it's high resolution, but when I open this one, art1 320, it's low resolution. So the first thing you need to do when you downscale your assets, or let's say when you have low resolution assets, is to actually force the engine to consider them low resolution and not apply any kind of filtering. So here's how you do it. You open the asset, and then here you click on the import tab, and you click on this preset button, which is a drop down, but for some weird reason, uh, Godot does not have a, an arrow down. It looks like a button, but it's a drop down list. And you change to 2D pixel, and then you click on re import. And notice how it went from blurry to pixely here. I'm going to do it again with the other one, R2. And preset, 2D pixel, re import. And now it's pixely. So that's going to be useful for later. We're going to need that in our low resolution room. Let's continue. Uh, so we have this room now that's way, way too big for our 320 viewport. And you can actually see the viewport here, the thin blue rectangle that you can see here. And if you look at the ruler, you see that it's at 320 and 200 here. So that's going to be our viewport. But now we need to make everything fit in there. So go back to the scene, and the first thing to work with is the ESC background. Let's change the high resolution image to our new tiny image. Drag and drop onto the texture. There you go. Now it fits into the blue rectangle. And for convenience, I'm just going to hide those texts that are useless right now. You can work with that later. I'm just going to hide them. Okay. But now, I also need to resize all of those other assets that are here. And they are stored in all those nodes. So what I would recommend uh, normally, if you were working on a low resolution game from the scratch, you would just create all of that from scratch and everything would be the right size straight away. But here we're lazy. We are reusing our high resolution room. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the capabilities of Godot to resize to scale all those nodes. So I create a node 2D, and then I drag and drop everything in it. And then I scale that node to divide its size by 4. So 1 divided by 4 would be 0 0.25. So let's do that. Let's apply a scale that divides the sizes by 4. And boom, there you go. There you have it. Now everything is one-fourth of the size it was. Let's look, for example, at the walkable area. We see it's correct. So you might have noticed that I did not do that for the ESC background. And that's because this one is a bit dangerous, because uh, Escoria has its own way of calculating coordinates, transforms, for example, when you click on stuff. And you don't want to divide that by four, because it might confuse Escoria about where you click. So leave this one untouched and just use a small asset on it. Uh, let's, run, let, let's run the game and see how it looks now. Uh, by the way, you notice that I run the room on its own using the top right button instead of running the whole game. That's very convenient for testing. So now we see that we have a, a game that's the right resolution, 320 by 200. You can tell because, for example, you can't, uh, you can't read anymore what's written because everything is uh, l uh, fat pixels now. But the problem is that our character is way too big. And we have another problem, is that when you walk to the right, you see that the camera goes too far and we can see outside of the scene. So let's tackle these two problems separately. The size of the character has to do with the fact that we have scaled our walkable area. And it's a bit weird now because we started with a huge one and then we scaled it down to a tiny one. Uh, and so the walkable area contains the size of the character in it. It says uh, how much the character is scaled. So we need to divide that by four as well. Let's run the game again. There you go. 
the current car has the right size. But now it walks very slowly. That's because the speed is also defined in the walkable area, and somehow it was divided by four. So let's re-multiply it by four. And I cannot stress enough that you would not have to do that uh, in, uh, if everything started from the, uh, with the low resolution uh, assets. Uh, you would just do that straight away with the right speeds and the right scales. Okay, there you go. The character walks at the, at the correct speed. What about this camera problem? Well, the issue is that we have not touched the ESC background. We have just reduced the size of the image. But there is another setting in the room itself which says how far the camera can go. And it's here, camera limits. And if you click on array, you will see that it has four coordinates and it says how far the camera can go. And it's still high resolution here. So let's change it to low resolution. And you can see that the red rectangle here was actually represent, representing the camera limits. And now it has the exact same size as the screen. So let's run the game again. So now everything seems right. And we see that when we walk to the right of the screen, now the room no longer scrolls to the sides. That's perfect. Let's continue. I told you that you would need to use low resolution assets from the start. And that's not what we're doing here. If we look at this painting on the wall and this other painting, Art 1 and Art 12, they are using the high resolution image. And we don't want that. We want to use our low resolution image, unless we're lazy, of course. But right now I'm trying to show you how to do it from, from scratch. So I'm going to drag and drop the low resolution image in the texture for both assets, Art 12 and Art 1. Um, there you go. But now we have a new problem, is that the images are tiny. And why is that? It's because, if you remember, this whole thing is in a node that divides the side by four. Well, no problem. We're just going to take those two nodes and pull them out of the, of the scaling, just to the same size as the background. Oops, they still look tiny. Why is that? It's because uh, Godot is smart. And it noticed that they were in a node that scales everything divided by four. And when you pull them out, it applies that scaling for you, 0 0.25. So just set it back manually to one. There you go. And same for the other one. And there you go. Now they have the right size. And now you will notice that there is no more dirty pixels caused by the double scaling, downscaling followed by upscaling. Now the pixels are perfectly aligned with the, with the game and with the scene. So you have a game that's natively 320 by 200 now. And that's amazing. So to conclude, uh, there are still problems. Problem number one is that when the character talks, the text is not exactly above his head. And problem number two is that the UI is huge. Like, you can see that it has not been scaled and it's overflowing outside of the window. Well, we will see how to fix that in another episode. But right now you know how to make a 300 by 200 pixels game natively, uh, right off the bat, with Kudo and his Korea. Uh, see you next time.